mid-70s also had a lasting impact on Hawthorne through the courage of a rover they called the Little Fella and his fight to play in the 75 grand final. Only one jumper hangs amidst the trophies in the Glen Ferry boardroom. The number five, worn by Peter Crimmins. Of all the players um, in my career, Crimo had the, the biggest influence on me. I'd say Peter Crimmins is the best rover that I've played on. Uh, because he'd give it all to you. And he'd give his all to his club. So tenacious, so ferocious, so competitive on the field, worked really, really hard. Um, gave nothing away, he asked no quarter, and he certainly played the game that way. But once he was part of Hawthorne, he was just Hawthorne through and through. There was no other club. I'm a Peter Crimmins fan. I love the little bloke. Um, I used to, uh, we used to give it to each other down in the fourth pocket at Hawthorne. But... While Sheedy and Crimmins were slugging it out, the Hawks skipper was battling what was first described as a groin injury. 1974, um, we found out Peter had carried the injury all during the year, but being 26 and being a super fit, supposedly super fit, footballer, athlete, um, we weren't too concerned about a swollen testicle. Then we weren't concerned at all, Peter and I weren't concerned at all about cancer because he was 26 and um, in fact it, that long ago you didn't even mention the word cancer. I must admit I did consider the kids straight away as soon as I was told, uh, wondering whether I'd be able to see them grow up. Uh, up to be men, which I would like to see them do. They're two boys, uh, but I think uh, that was a, that was uh, instantaneous thinking. Now I don't think anything of that as, of the sort at the moment. In September 1974, doctors removed a testicle, and after two prolonged sessions of chemotherapy, Crimmins fought back, intent on captaining Hawthorne in the 75 Grand Final. On the Thursday night before the game, the selection committee of Kennedy. Crimmins, Vice-Captain Don Scott and Chairman of Selectors Ken Herbert picked the team. We'd known about the problems that, uh, that he was facing and had seen him uh, fall over and get up again and fall over and get up again. He was the, the captain of the side. He, I suppose everyone knew the sort of effect that he'd have on other players around as far as building them up. and. Uh, you know, doing it for him, and, and I suppose through sentiment we felt that he'd, he'd get the nod. I sort of thought that he wasn't fit. Well, in fact, I knew he wasn't match fit, but I just had a hunch that his presence on the field might, uh, might uh, do something for the team. But I didn't have the guts to follow my hunch through because um, uh, the stakes were, to put it mildly, pretty high. He was an absolutely shattered man, shattered. It's the most disappointing and the most upset I've ever seen him. He told me in no uncertain terms what he thought, and I didn't blame him for that either. I think I would have been the same. And um, I think John had to make the final decision, and John was worried about Peter's health. So he didn't play and we lost. Peter and Gwen stayed home on grand final day, listening to the game on radio. If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling tired, just think of Crimmins. He's home, he's not here. He brought his insides up this morning, he's, he's not here. You weren't at the match committee on Thursday night, as I was, when we had a big argument as to whether he ought to be in or out, and everybody spoke his mind and he finished up out. He's not happy, he wasn't happy about it. Who would be? The Hawks lost to North Melbourne, and when they played off again for the 76 Premiership, Crimmins was on his deathbed. He sent a telegram, and um, John Kennedy read that telegram out prior to the game. Words to the effect of, um, you know, it's going to be the toughest 120 minutes of your life, I'll ride every bump with you all the way, or words to that effect, signed the, the little fellow. And that's all 
that's all John Kennedy needed to read out. The rest was history, and of course we went on to to win the grand final, and then a few of us went back to his place that night and and shared it all with him, you know, until about two o'clock in the morning, and unfortunately that was the last time we we saw him alive. Um, I mean, the club lost a uh, favourite son in terms of a footballer, but they lost a lot more in that he was one of the genuine leaders, one of the genuine good people in that club that just made it a place that you want to be a part of because you could rub shoulders with the uh, with the kind of people that Peter Crimmins represented. Uh, but, like, the impact on, the, on this club, it's still here, as strong as ever. Now, that is true, you know, that's, I'm not making that up. People have never forgotten him. It wasn't easy, it wasn't easy, but uh, Gwen, my wife, uh, and we're both getting old, getting a bit older, and we've had a pretty good life, and uh, these things come up, and you have to accept them and uh, make do with uh, situations such as this as best you can.